Julia Roberts, crazy conspiracies, lizard person abducted by aliens. Let's talk about it. Let's go. I saw this movie, man, and it's got me thinking. It's got you thinking. We got to think about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, that's right. I'm the man you may know as Ian. I'm going to talk a little bit about Leave the World Behind because I had a pretty crazy conversation about this movie. And I think it's raising some real valid points. And I don't know how many people saw it, but I do know that it's got Julie Roberts. And she's clearly a crazy conspiracy nut because strap your, strap your boots on, friends. Here we go. First, let's start. And... For everybody who's here, just spoilers. I'm going to spoil this because nothing really happens. It's this hyper-tense thriller written by them and directed by the Mr. Robot guy. And uh, all he does is spread crazy wild theories, man. I'm telling you, it's all crazy. And it's all connected to friends. It's all connected to friends. So let's run through some stuff here, man. So, um, yeah, let's talk about... We don't have to talk about the ending just yet, so I'll give you a little bit more time before I hit the spoilers. Um, but the premise is... How do I do it without... I mean, how do I do this without spoiling it? All right, forget it. So all we're going all in, baby. Spoilers. It might be the end. Well, in fact, the spoiler is we don't know what's going on. It could be the end of the world... It could be an attack on the United States. It could be uh, aliens. It could be like literally anything because they don't really. There's a lot of telling about what's going on here, but not a lot of showing. There's just stuff. Maybe there's nukes. Maybe there's not. Maybe there's the computer. Uh, co- co- <laughs> what are they? Havana syndrome. So. I, this this movie's just weird, and it had a bunch of people I was talking to freaked out because they're like, "This could really happen, man!" And I was like, "That's strange," because this whole movie was just there, of, full of like bunk conspiracy theories that were well, maybe they're not all bunk. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this guy knows something. Maybe he's part of the elite cabal, like Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke. I don't know. Who knows? Because you know who is behind this? Obama. Maybe there is a conspiracy. How did the Obamas connect to this? I don't know. Their names appear in it. What are they? They're producers. They were paid to make this conspiracy theory movie. What? And it's number one on the platform. It's crazy because the the film, the book came out in 2020. And there's all sorts of crazy things. Essentially, there's a family that decides to go on vacation and then they meet, uh, they, they rented this house and weird stuff starts happening. And then uh, their phones don't work, which is very scary. And they can't watch Friends connected there. There's some sort of blackout in Manhattan when George uh, Maharshala Ali shows up with his, his daughter who knows everything, who's mildly racist. And uh, yeah, it's pretty weird. I don't know. How is uh, it's an outrage? How is Obama connected to this? Well, they really liked the book, I guess, and their higher ground production produced it. They co-founded the company in 2018 to tell powerful stories. What? This is this is too bizarre. Why are they even in this? And uh, yeah, conspiracy theories abound. All that. Oh, sorry, wrong one. No, not didn't want to look at that page. Sorry, sorry, a little confused. Hold on. But let's go to, uh, there's a bunch of birds in it, man. And the birds, birds aren't real, man. Did you know that? Birds aren't real. But birds aren't real because a guy on, did a TED Talk and created a fake conspiracy theory that said birds aren't real. But a bunch of people still think they're not real. But then the deer, man, the deer, they eat people. I don't have a conspiracy about that, so I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But there's also Havana Syndrome. At one point, they start hearing this loud noise, and they don't know what it is, and it's, like, causing health problems. Or is it a tick? Is it a biologically engineered tick to make you lose all your teeth? Or is it Havana Syndrome, which was also debunked because it's a big scam? It's just people suing the government to make some monies? I don't know. 
I don't know. And uh, then there's a whole, they're trolling Elon Musk in the whole thing. Who knew? And now viewers are mocking Elon Musk because he doesn't get it. So there's a, <laughs> there's a whole part where there's, all the roads are clogged with automatic driving cars. It's all Teslas, brand new Teslas. You know, because let's keep people from from leaving Long Island? Like, why would anyone do that? Why would that matter? Why would that be a thing? I don't know. Do you know? Like, this plot was a little... There's a little too many contrivances. Like, there's a giant oil tanker that, that grounds on the same exact place where they're at. And then, like... All these airplanes keep crashing into the same place where they're at. Like, okay. Huge drones dropping stuff. Crazy Mexican ladies yelling at people. They don't understand. <laughs> so anyway, Elon's cars are clogging up the highways. And he responded. Um, his response was that... What did he say? He said, uh, Tesla can charge from solar panels even if the world goes fully Mad Max and there is no more gasoline. But what he didn't comment on was the fact that the all the cars were self-piloting and they'd been hacked and been told all to drive directly into that one road so that they could block it so Julia Roberts couldn't get back so she couldn't watch Friends with her daughter. That's what this is all about. Again, the the ending is very ambiguous of this. So let's le read some reviews, and then I'll fully clear up the ending for you and explain it. If you care about using your time wisely, then avoid this film like the plague. But if you like terrible written media, then by all means, grab a snack and relax. Because this film is the utter embodiment of utter garbage. <laughs> the biggest red flag is the Obama... Whoa! Gonna skip that one. Uh, let's see what else. Poor screen adaptation, too much tell, very little show. Yet another in addition to the insular U.S. American narrative that everyone is out to get us because we are so great. When the villain is not tangible, uh, the psychology of the characters must be portrayed effectively to convey the horror. And yeah, doesn't really do much of anything. Like, none of the characters have any arcs. Like, it just... I think they did... They acted well, but, you know, they clearly didn't... I don't know. Maybe they spent all their money on CGI. But essentially, here's the ending. At the very end, they don't know what's going on, but they almost get eaten by deers, Julia Roberts and the one girl, and they're, they're looking out at the city and they see it looks like the city is being attacked or has been nuked because there's radiation or maybe a power plant detonated. Nobody knows. Uh, in the meantime, all the animals are acting crazy for no reason. They don't explain that. They just do, um, which you know makes a lot of sense. I, I didn't know that deer congregated by the thousands and started eating people when there's plenty of nice green trees around everywhere. And then they... Um, there's a standoff with Kevin Bacon, and Kevin Bacon's like, it, what if everybody ganged up on us and started a war? And then he explains that there's a bunker, and in the bunker, you know, there, this is there's a giant plot hole, too, because Kevin Bacon originally, the uh, GH in the original, and in the very beginning of the movie, he's like, oh, Kevin Bacon designed my house, and he put in some special features so that I'd be safer. He, he customized it himself. So if it's war and there's a bunker, wouldn't he, if Kevin Bacon knows what's going on, why wouldn't he make either a bunker in his house or make GH's house a bunker? What were the special features? It didn't ever paid off. It's like a lot of stuff in this movie. Setups and no payoffs. So he tells them about a bunker of a super rich family that made like the best state-of-the-art bunker, yet Kevin Bacon's not going there. But he told them about it. So the daughter that goes missing for half the movie, she finds it, wanders into it. There's no codes to get in. It's just open. It's cool. Just walk right into my bunker. No padlocks, nothing. And she goes downstairs. She's been trying to watch Friends this whole time, and she finally gets to see what happens at the end of Friends. And that's your movie, folks. That's what you get when you get something produced by people who don't know what they're doing. You get a movie... That makes no sense. So that's what you got. I 
Not going to say I hated it, but I definitely didn't really like it. Uh, it was a lot of tension that went a lot of nowhere, and the ending, not that I care about an, an ambiguous ending, it didn't really matter to me, but it felt like a lot of hemming and hawing about nothing. You know, Julia Roberts playing a Super Karen, and then the daughter also being racist, but that's cool because she's allowed to be a racist. And then the kid losing his teeth for no reason. And then he's perfectly okay with losing his teeth. He's not like, rah, 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 rah. he's just talking like a normal person. And then amazingly, people have pills for the Havana syndrome. Oh, okay, I didn't know you could just take pills and cure losing your teeth and, and vomiting blood. I didn't know that there was just, you know, med medicine. We, it's like this was written by someone who's too stupid to actually come up with a good plot. So... There you have it, folks. That's my honest opinion. Stay out of the conspiracy theory world. It's far more insidious than what they put in this movie. So they want you to think that this is all real, man. Tell me what's your favorite conspiracy down below. Let me know. Did you like this movie? Did you watch the movie? Are you ready to wear your tinfoil hat? You let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, check out our audio podcast, which is on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those places for free to you. As well as the live stream, which we do here on Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join us. It's a good party. I promise you'll have a good time. But in the meantime, thank you for listening. But I'm on to the next one.